So CES 2022 is currently going on and JBL just announced even more speakers. Now I'll be honest, I was in the middle of working on my Flip 6 and Charge 5 versus Pulse 4 video. But I think it's pretty important that we address JBL's new Boombox 3 and Pulse 5 because I have some thoughts. So first, let's address the new Pulse 5, because basically with the Pulse 4, you're really just paying for the light feature, because sound quality wise, this speaker just doesn't sound anywhere near as good as the Charge 5 or even the Flip 6. Now, the Pulse 5 looks very similar to the Pulse 4, except its proportions are a little different. It now has that huge JBL logo on the front, which I know some people will probably not like, but the light feature now extends to the passive radiator on the bottom, which which I personally think is extremely cool. It's unnecessary, but it's pretty cool. However, the Pulse 5 now has a built-in carrying strap just like the Flip 6, and JBL is really trying to make an effort here that you should take the Pulse 5 on the go with you. And personally, I wouldn't really like to take my Pulse 5 on the go with me because either I don't want to risk either scratching or cracking the acrylic body. And like I mentioned in the past, my first Pulse 4 died of water damage the first time it was touched by water. So personally, I am skeptical of the Pulse 4's waterproofness. And that extends to the Pulse 5, so I guess we'll have to see. Maybe I'll buy a second Pulse 5 and then we can do a stress test, so let me know if you guys would like to see that. However, what really has me curious about the Pulse 5 is that it has a new speaker setup. Now the Pulse 5 has a new larger pass radiator on the bottom, and that's supposed to help with bass. But like I mentioned in my upcoming video, the Pulse 4 already has a lot of bass. But what really has me excited about the Pulse 5 is that it now has a dedicated woofer and a dedicated tweeter. So hopefully that will help with the Pulse 5's instrument separation because instrument separation on the Pulse 4 is a major weak point on it, especially when compared to the Charge 5 and Flip 6. But regarding other tech specs, the Pulse 5 still has an advertised battery life of 12 hours, which personally does have me a little worried, but the Pulse 5 is still using Party Boost, which is good, and I wouldn't be surprised if the Pulse 5 has a customizable EQ, just like the Extreme 3, Flip 6, and now even the Charge 5. And if you're watching this video, it's very likely that you already have one of the aforementioned speakers, so definitely go and update your firmware. Regarding availability, the Pulse 5 will be available in the summer for $250, the same as the Pulse 4. And right now, I will say that if you're thinking about getting a Pulse 4 right now, I do think that it is worth waiting for the Pulse 5. Right now, it is rather hard to justify getting the Pulse 4 because the speaker just doesn't sound all that great. So hopefully the Pulse 5's new speaker setup and hopefully improved sound quality would help justify spending $250 on what essentially is a mid-size speaker. But now, let's move on to the Boombox 3, which admittedly did arrive much sooner than I expected. Now, design-wise, I'm gonna be blunt, this thing looks hideous. Now, I like the overall shape and proportions of this speaker. This is uh, the same proportions that you'll find on the Extreme 3 and Charge 5. But I do not like this handle. It just doesn't look like it belongs there. And unfortunately, JBL still hasn't taken my advice of adding a shoulder strap to the Boombox 3. But design aside, just like with JBL's other newer speakers, the Boombox 3 does have a significant speaker setup improvement, which I think is very important to point out because there really wasn't a speaker setup difference between the original Boombox and the Boombox 2. The only real difference between the original Boombox and the Boombox 2 was the addition of Party Boost and a very marginal sound quality improvement, which I feel the majority of people wouldn't even notice or care. However, with the Boombox 3, JBL does make mention of a new three-way speaker setup which consists of a racetrack subwoofer, which is really just an oval woofer, very similar to what you'll find on the Charge 5 and Flip 6, except much larger. You've got your dual mid-range drivers and you've got your dual tweeters like before. Now, given that we can see your classic exposed dual passive radiators on the sides of the Boombox 3, I think this means that with the Boombox 3, we're going to have an oval woofer right in the middle, 
and then it's going to be flanked by your mid-range drivers and your tweeters. Now, the Boombox 2 has a dual woofer and dual tweeter setup, so personally, I am very happy to see that JBL is making better use of the space found on the Boombox 3. However, I do assume that the mid-range drivers on the Boombox 3 are going to be smaller than the woofers found on the Boombox 2. But hopefully, this helps with the instrument separation on the Boombox 3, and hopefully, it also adds a ton of bass, which is something the Boombox 2 is currently lacking at those higher volumes, and especially when compared to my baby, the UE Hyperboom. So overall, I think the Boombox 3 looks hideous, but I am very excited to hear what it sounds like, and I do feel that if you're thinking about getting a Boombox 2 today, it is worth waiting for the Boombox 3. Now, the Boombox 3 will be available in the summer for $500, and just like the Boombox 2, it has an advertised battery life of 24 hours, and is still using Party Boost. But next up, there's the Party Box Encore and the Party Box Encore Essential. And just given at how JBL's latest Party Box speakers have performed, I really don't know how to feel about the Party Box Encore. On one hand, the Party Box 110, 310, and 710 are all great. But on the other hand, the Party Box Encore just looks like a replacement for the Party Box on the go, which really was a huge disappointment. Now, just like with the Party Box on the go, the Encore series has an output of 100 watts, but I'm willing to bet that's while this speaker is plugged in. And regarding speaker setups, just like the Party Box on the go, the Encore series has a single woofer and dual tweeter setup. Now, regarding battery life, the Encore Essential has an advertised battery life of 6 hours, just like the Party Box on the go. Whereas the more premium Encore has an advertised battery life of 10 hours, which is a lot better. Now, the more premium Encore comes included with two wireless microphones with control dials up top, and its light feature is a little bit more built out than the light feature found on the Encore Essential. It has a larger strobe light up top, and it has colored LEDs on the sides. Now, given that both of these Encore speakers do connect to JBL's Party Box app, I am willing to bet that you will be able to connect one Encore to at least one other Party Box 110, 3 10 or 710 because JBL has already made mention that you can get two Encore speakers and get them to play in left and right stereo mode. Now, these Encore speakers will be available in March. The Encore Essential will retail for $300, whereas the Sam's Club exclusive Party Box Encore will retail for $400. And I think it's a no-brainer here. You definitely want to spring for the Sam's Club version. But at $400, you might as well just get a Party Box 110, if you can find one. Overall, I am cautiously optimistic about the Party Box Encore. And that's pretty much it. Now, JBL did announce a few new pair of truly wireless earbuds and a $1,000 pair of Mark Levinson ANC headphones. But personally, I really don't care about JBL's headphones. Now, personally, I feel that if you're thinking about getting a JBL Pulse 4 or Boombox 2 in early 2022, then it is worth waiting for the Pulse 5 and Boombox 3. Right now, it is very hard to justify getting the Pulse 4 because the speaker just doesn't sound all that great, especially when compared to the Flip 6 and Charge 5. And even though I think the Boombox 3 looks hideous, hopefully its new speaker setup will give us the sound quality improvements that we were looking for on the Boombox 2. If you made it this far, I guess you enjoyed the video, so hit the like button and get subscribed. If you want to pick any of the products up, they'll be linked down below. And if you want to further support the channel, check out the merch. I made some shirts and hoodies that look and feel great. And, you know, I can be very particular, so I'll only slap my name on something that I'm really proud of.